Hey everyone, my name's Ashley Ronning. I'm an artist, illustrator, and a zine maker. And today I'm going to teach you about how to make an eight page zine, as well as making zines with sustainability in mind. So in my own practice, I make zines about space and nature and mental health. And I also, in my illustration practice, um, draw editorial illustrations for magazines. I draw posters for bands and I draw some band t-shirts as well. Uh, so I got started with zine making about 10, 11 years ago. Uh, I was living in Canberra and Vanessa Berry, who's an incredible zine maker from Sydney, who's been making zines for decades, came along and gave a workshop and it was the first zine I ever made and I had an amazing time and it was using the same format that I'm going to teach you today that's super approachable and I've been hooked ever since. Uh, part of why I moved to Melbourne is because of how much of a huge zine scene and DIY community is here and yeah it's really become a big part of my life. Um, so what is a zine? Well people have a lot of different definitions for this but to me, a zine is a small, handmade artist book. So zines are often low cost, they're often small, they're often photocopied, handmade, and they often have a small print run of 50 or less, but all these rules can be broken. There's no rules with zine making, and that's part of what makes them so special. No one can really say when the first zine was made, uh, because everyone's definition of a zine is so different, it could be the first book that someone ever made. But I have seen, I have seen, <laughs> I have seen zines as old as from the 1940s at the State Library. They've got a huge collection of zines, and yeah, they've got these really gorgeous, amazing sci-fi zines at the State Library of Victoria as part of their zine collection, which is thousands and thousands and thousands of zines. And yeah, so zines have been around since around then. And then when huge punk and DIY scenes and Riot Girl were really ramping up in the 90s is when it became kind of a household name and a lot of them were getting passed around. It was a really good way to disseminate information about gigs that were on and stuff like that and so it became big then and it really hasn't ramped down since then it's just gotten more and more popular and with the rise of the internet it hasn't slowed it down at all it's just meant people are able to access different zines and different resources and different ideas even more so yeah the internet's not going to stop zines that's for sure another great thing about zines is they you don't have to go through a publishing house or find an agent or anything. You could make a zine and distribute it on the same day. Like, it's really that simple. There's no middlemen. There's no one to censor you. It's really what you make of it. And, yeah, you can just get your ideas and art and information out there so easily. And because they're so sometimes simple and sometimes small and and approachable it means that sometimes they're they're not as scary to read as big academic books and texts it, it, it's a really friendly way to get your ideas across a thing that makes zines so good for a sustainable art practice is because there's no minimum print run with zines you can make one you can make ten uh, you can print them on demand. There's flexibility with materials. You can use recycled materials if, that, if, that's, if that's what you can find. And it's a great medium for activists. Because there's no censorship, you can get your ideas out there and, and say, for example, make a zine about climate change to, to educate your relatives. Yeah, hand that out for Christmas. So what we're doing today is we're going to make an eight page zine. So it's a really great format because you can make it out of one piece of paper. So here's a zine I made about how to make this zine. 
and you can download a PDF of this. Uh, it should be in the description, perhaps, down there. But yeah, this scene is made out of one piece of A4 paper. All the info there. And you can put a poster on the back if you want. And it just folds up. But let's learn how to fold this first. We're going to fold a blank one. So I'll fold it fairly slowly in this, but if you need a pause, do that, go back. We're in a video, we can do it all. So grab your piece of paper, fold it in half long ways like this. Make sure you're nice and neat and the edges and the corners are meeting together and make a nice crease along there. And fold it out, fold it in half the other way, short ways. Nice and crisp. Fold that out again. And then I want you to fold these sides in so they meet the crease here, like so. got these flaps now that you've folded in with and you've got eight panels here and these are going to create your eight pages so the next step is fold it in half short ways again and making sure that this this folded side is on the top and the open sections on the bottom I want you to grab some scissors and we're just going to cut this crease here, okay, on the folded side. Just as far as that next crease. So you've got that. Open it up. You should have a gap in the middle there. And then Fold in half again, long ways, and then push it together. You'll start to have a diamond shape. Push that together. So you've got this cross, and this bit's tricky. I want you to push all the pages around so that you've got a nice book. There you go. So you've got your zine there and you should be able to unfold it and put it back together pretty easily from now. Too easy. That is your blank canvas. So before we get started making, I'm going to show you some other examples using this format. Here's one I made, writers and their typewriters. So I made this one on an A3 sheet of paper, so it's twice as big. There we go. And there's no poster on the back of this one. That's okay. I've got another one here by Becky Nozziara. It's a per zine, which is like a personal diary uh, genre of zine. It's just text. We got this one, desk det detritus. Um, this one is risograph printed. Beautiful illustrations and just a tiny bit of text on the back. Here's one we've got by Lisa Dino, Devilish Delights. 
a beautiful illustrations in the middle. Again, Resograph printed. And a poster on the back. Chuck that on the wall. Too easy. So, there we have it. You know how to make an eight page theme. It's a great format as well because if you've created your zine on this blank canvas of yours, you can fold it out and chuck that straight on a photocopier and make as many more as you want. So, what next? Ah, so if you're making a zine, you're going to need a few creative materials. I've got a few here from my materials box. So, heaps of pencils and pens and fine liners, all kinds of stuff in here. I really like using, yeah, I, I, it's good to use kind of darker materials, I find, and not too many light colours because they'll photocopy a little bit better. And what else is there? Textures. Some collage bits. I really like using holographic stuff when I make collage zines because it's really unpredictable how they're going to photocopy and sometimes it's a great surprise. I've got some stickers, double-sided tape, these fun stickers I got that are like little shiny, little shiny gold guys, washi tape, glue stick, um, and when I make zines that use staples, I like to use these copper staples because they're archival. You might want your zine to last forever, and then you've got to use one of them. I also love to use old magazines. This one's a family circle from 73, so it's got some really beautiful images and also some really strange ads in there. Uh, so, I don't know about you, but right now I'm self-isolated and it's a great excuse or a great reason to use stuff that you've already got around the house. So you could use stuff like old magazines or books and make sure that no one else wants to use them before you start cutting them up. You could use toilet paper rolls. You can use cardboard from cereal boxes as the covers of your zines or or maybe the whole zine is made of cardboard. You can use fun stuff like in the, on the inside of envelopes, you've got those beautiful blue patterns that disguise anyone from being able to read through the envelope and they make a great pattern and they look beautiful photocopied. I've got some examples of some stuff I made this week. I made this about my isolation time. Um, you might recognize the patterns in this from um, Who Gives a Crap Toilet Paper. They're always wrapped in really beautiful wrapping and so I cut a lot of that up to use for the patterns in this. And these stickers I, I think I got from an op shop, these letter stickers, and I also used um, bits of magazines. So yeah, social distancing, Zoom. What's the time? Who am I? Let's just hibernate. Some of you might be feeling the same. Also, a great thing about zines is they don't necessarily need to look like a book. I've seen zines that are written on a potato or um, a friend of mine made a zine that was just a big cardboard box with a piece of paper stuck to the bottom. And what was on the paper was the content of the zine. So yeah, there's no rules. Here's one I made out of a toilet roll. Like a little scroll kind of format. Here's what it looks like. And that's, I just cut a slit in the toilet paper roll and rolled up my message and put it in. Too easy. 
Um, so when you're using other materials, say in the outside world, when you can get out there, it's good to think about the sustainability of the materials you're using. For example, are you using paper and other stuff that is recycled or recyclable? Depending on where you're living, a lot of coated shiny papers can't be recycled. Um, so keep stuff like that in mind. Uh, was this material made in a sustainable way? Um, for example, uh, if you, I guess the, the best kind of paper you could use is perhaps paper you handmade yourself or uh, for example, you wouldn't want to use a lot of plastic kind of materials in your zine. Textures and stuff are fine, of course. Was the material made locally? If you can find some handmade locally sourced materials, that's, that's a great thing to use. And remember that stuff you find around the house, stuff that you find in op shops, maybe you've got a, a recycling centre that has materials. Reusing stuff is the best possible way you can make a zine or make any art. Reusing materials is a great way to go. You're not creating something new. Yeah. So I find a lot of people who are new to zine making get stuck with theme ideas. Um, it really can be about anything. Um, there's no limits with zine making themes. Just make sure that you're not uh, offending anyone and you're good to go. So for example some ideas could be DIY projects you can make at home, perhaps make a zine about your neighbourhood, you can make a zine about how climate change affects you personally or if you're really 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 stuck just making start making something really really silly so just start scribbling on the page just the silliest idea you can think of just start getting stuff down on the page don't overthink it the hardest part about zine making is the first zine and if you can get that first zine out of the way as quickly as possible then all the rest will be much much easier so perhaps you've made a zine it's all ready to go now what so in Melbourne here we've got sticky Institute which is a zine shop it's incredible there's heaps of zine making materials there it's closed right now, but hopefully we'll be open again in a few months. Uh, and they will take 10 or less of any zine that you want to bring in and they'll sell it in the shop. It's incredible. So there's a huge variety of zines for sale in there because they will just take on so many zines from so many artists. And perhaps if you live somewhere else, there might be something similar for you. For example, Quendi's in Chicago has amazing zines and comics. Yeah, just start Googling or ask around. Uh, you'll be able to find something. Or if there's not something near you, you'll be able to mail your zines to a distro like that. You can also trade zines. There's a huge history of trading zines. Um, yeah, that's how a lot of... Some people don't sell their zines at all. They just trade, which is amazing. Um, just, yeah, a zine fairs are a great place to do the trading. So just be polite and and yeah be really friendly and i think you'll find a bunch of people to trade with you you can also hide them around town put them in books put them on tram seats leave them in cafes you can put them in community libraries for people to take home uh, and you can also make an online shop and etsy or a big cartel is really easy to set up and yeah it doesn't i think Big Cartel, you can start a shop for free, and Etsy, I think it's 20 cents a listing to start off with, and they take a small cut, and yeah, it's a really easy way to get going. Uh, another a book I'd really recommend if you want to dive in further is The Stolen Sharpie Revolution. Uh, that's by Alex Reck from Portland, and it's just chock full of incredible zine ideas and resources and you'll have endless ammo for your zine making adventures. And, it, and lastly, uh, something I've found really wonderful about my zine making adventure is that I've made so many friends. 
it's a really great way to meet like-minded people around yeah a really wonderful creative practice and yeah well, if you start getting your zines out there and go along to zine launches for other people and perhaps have zine launches for yourself then you'll meet so many like-minded wonderful people and yeah um i think that's all i've got um, feel free to get in touch if you've got any questions and yeah thank you so much for having me